Like, is this a coming out video right now? Like, is anyone else questioning their gender or just me? Hey besties, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl, Dutchie. Yahoo! Can't stop playing with my hair, I apologize. I hope you're all loving the purple. Like, who is she? The fact that I haven't dyed my hair on my own as a bisexual itself is depressing. And the fact that I've actually never had it color dyed other than blonde, also quite depressing. So we're here, we're queer, we're e-girl strands. So the purpose of today's video is to open up the conversation surrounding gender fluidity, being non-binary, and talking about ways to identify whether you are non-binary or not. And there's a few reasons as to why I'm filming this video now. The first reason being there is a lot of discourse on being non binary and things on my TikTok feed and I thought it was about time to bring that over to YouTube. Um, a lot of you have been asking for it recently as well. And the other reason is I found myself on Kira Graves channel the other day um, and she had uploaded a video on how she knew she was non-binary. So Kira's pronouns are she, they. And I won't lie, I found myself relating to a lot of the stuff she had to say. I literally started researching this topic to film a video on purely because I didn't want to say the wrong thing or be giving out the wrong information because I do not identify as non-binary myself. But since doing my research and seeing all these other YouTubers and TikTokers and influencers who identify as non-binary and the pronouns they identify with and why, I'm fully sitting here questioning my gender right now. Like is this a coming out video right now? Like is anyone else questioning their gender or just me? You are? Good. <laughs> oh. I'm obviously going to link Kira's video below because I'm going to take a few points from what she said and things she felt in the video because I think it's really important to discuss and if you are questioning your gender identity currently then I think it would be a good idea to go and watch that and listen to it from a perspective of someone who does identify as non-binary because obviously they have a better way of explaining it and they also talk about how they came out with those pronouns and that sort of thing as well so that'll be helpful so I will leave it below but basically the first thing Kira mentioned was that she like the first couple of representations of non-binary individuals that she saw around her or on YouTube or whatever were all sort of the same. Like she just kept seeing the same representation over and over again of non-binary individuals. And then because of that she ended up coming to the conclusion that she didn't think she could identify as non-binary because she didn't feel the same or she didn't identify closely with those other non-binary individuals that she'd seen represented in social media. That because she didn't directly resonate with these non-binary individuals completely, like there were parts of it that she did but like some of it she didn't. For example she didn't want to get top surgery or didn't feel the need to get top surgery she then didn't think that she could identify as non-binary. And now while getting top surgery or the need or want to get top surgery is definitely not a requirement for someone to identify as non-binary, I can definitely see where she's coming from in the way that she thought that she couldn't identify as non-binary because she didn't want or feel the need for top surgery. Or because she felt different from how other non-binary people were represented or the thoughts and feelings that they had and had expressed. And literally the amount of times I've had this thought. So I don't want to say the wrong thing here or come off a certain way or like say it in the wrong way but I'm just gonna speak my mind. A few weeks ago I recorded an episode for my podcast Topics of Taboo with one of my best friends Dom. Now we spoke briefly about how annoying clothes that are gendered are. For example he loves the fit of women's jeans and the colour and all of that generally but obviously sometimes his anatomy comes into play and it doesn't really work with high-waisted jeans which are, which are predominantly what women's jeans are. A lot of women's jeans and the ones he likes in particular are often high-waisted and so we were having a chat about how annoying gendered clothing is and it got me thinking and I explained this on the podcast as well if you want to go listen to it I'll link that below as well but there are definitely times and like often I'm not even saying once or twice I would say it is a common occurrence there are certain days weeks even months even where I just wish I didn't have boobs or I wish I didn't have a waist and curves I kind of wish at times I had a male's body like a more masculine masculine, flat-chested, no-curves body just so that half of my clothes would fit better or fit nicely and not look, you know, like lumpy, I guess, in a way. Like, with stuff like this, I mean, I don't have big boobs to begin with, but, like, even this, like, you can see them sort of thing. I'd love for it to be flat, um, especially with t-shirts. With shirts, you can hide it a bit more because it's a little bit more, like, baggy. But with t-shirts, I have 
felt that so often with pants. I've been like, ugh, why do I have thighs? Like, why do I look like this? Can't I just have that, like, skinnier guy look? It would look so much better with these chinos, you know, that sort of thing. And I don't actually know what that feeling is or how to explain it more than I have, but it is such a strong feeling. And the more that I'm thinking about this video and, like, researching what it means to be non-binary, it, I don't know, I guess we'll dive into it a bit more as we go on in this video. But yeah, I know sometimes, and it is a very strong feeling, I just wish I didn't have curves. I just wish I didn't have this body. And there's a difference between, it's not so much gender dysphoria because I do enjoy the body I have um, and I wouldn't want to get, say, top surgery or any other surgery. I do like me as a body and as a being. It's just sometimes I wish the clothes that I wore fit me differently and fit like they would on a guy. But I don't actually want to be a guy, if that makes sense. Like, not quite. <laughs> yeah. Like, as I, as I said, I'm comfortable in my body, but sometimes I just wish I could have a guy's body or appear to have a guy's body for certain outfits, if that makes sense. And then other times, I really like how feminine I can make my body look with having boobs and curves and certain pants and certain dresses. Not that I wear them often, and we'll go into that. But sometimes I really like feminizing myself and looking girly um, and, like, wearing makeup and all those things. And obviously, and I need to stress this, and I will stress this throughout the video, clothing and gender expression are two different things. Choosing to wear makeup and gender identity are two different things. Like, none of them have to correlate, none of them have to coincide. They can, but they certainly don't have a direct correlation and don't need to have a direct correlation. I did some more research into possible signs to look out for to identify whether you think you are non-binary or not within yourself or whether you may be gender fluid. Now, I just want to make clear before I go any further with this video, gender fluid and non-binary are not the same thing. Some people do use them interchangeably though. Gender fluid simply means you move between two or more gender identities, whereas non-binary means you do not exclusively identify as a woman or exclusively a man or somewhere in between. That's what non-binary is. Now, before I I get into explaining some of these hints and tips I think the best thing that you should do to begin with and it's what I did today was research um, do your own research on being non-binary and on gender fluidity because um, we're gonna take that in and have different experiences and relate to different things because we are all different beings non-binary is a spectrum gender is a spectrum everything is a spectrum a spectrum again spectrum so now I'm going to list a few different things and then I'm also going to be answering some of your questions about gender and being non-binary and all those sorts of things to the best of my ability at the end. So the first thing that you may be experiencing if you are non-binary is that you are feeling uncomfortable with your assigned gender at birth. For example, I am assigned female at birth, so I'm AFAB. So if I feel uncomfortable with the fact that I've been assigned a gender that I don't feel comfortable with. I particularly don't feel that way and the thing I do need to preface before we get into all of these things that I'm going to talk about is to identify as non-binary you do not have to tick boxes, you do not have to identify with a certain amount of things. You can identify with one thing and be non-binary. If you identify with something along the spectrum of gender fluidity or of being non-binary you can identify with that validly. Don't feel like like you're sitting there and I'm saying all of these things and you're like, nah, 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 I don't feel like that. That does not take away your feelings or your validity of your gender identity. Just so we're clear. Um, yeah, so for example, not liking the idea of being perceived as a female in the public eye or if you left the house and another individual that doesn't know you would view you as female. That makes you uncomfortable. And as a result, you may do things to try and hide your assigned gender at birth or the way you look. For example, wearing caps a lot, beanies a lot, and that's not just for a fashion choice. Like you do it purposely to try and not look as feminine. Or wearing baggy clothes, again, not a fashion choice and not something to do with like if your weight or anything like that if it's more to do with you want to look less a certain way or more a certain way wearing buns a lot you know like covering your hair if you're super feminine and your mum or dad or whatever won't let you cut it those sorts of things the next thing and I feel so strongly with this hating gender roles and hating the way that society makes you feel you have to act or look or breathe a certain way Kira talks about this in her video and about how she hates the way society expects people to behave women to behave men to behave, how there's such a binary between the two. Sorry, I just had to close the window because that lighting was really annoying me. But yeah, no, she hates the way that society expects people need to act or 
be a certain way due to their biological sex. And that really hit home for me. Like I've always known that I feel that way, but that angered me. I too have always rejected the idea of gender roles and gender norms. Like seriously, fuck gendered clothing sections in stores. What is that? With the exception of certain undergarments, I understand this. Women with boobs, I know you need bras. <laughs> so I'm not saying we should all be braless. I mean, we could all be braless, but I understand that that's, that's an exception. But why should actual tees, pants, shorts, everything have a gender? Well, the answer is they shouldn't, or in my opinion anyway. But yeah, I've always just worn what I feel most comfortable in. I thought that was always just an expression of who I am and my personality and that I'm very like, fuck all y'all, I'll wear what I want, that sort of thing. And I've shopped in the men's section for years. I made a TikTok about this earlier, but I almost get a thrill. Like I get such a sense of enjoyment from shopping in the men's section of a clothing store or a thrift shop. And I say men's like this because obviously clothes don't have a gender. Um, but yeah, I get a thrill when I'm like shopping in the men's section and an older man or a middle-aged man or whatever's there and he gives me a look and it's like, yeah, Jonathan, I literally could pull off those 501s you've been eyeing off for the past half an hour better than you and steal your wife while I'm at it. It's Mr. Steal Your Girl. Like... <laughs> And no, I don't have a penis, but I don't need a penis to put some fabric on my body. Period. But yeah, another thing, you might find yourself really rejecting the idea of being called miss or ma'am or girly or, you know, ladies, you know? Like when you're at a cafe or the cinemas or dinner and like the server or waitress or whatever, Kira mentioned this as well, come up to you and they're like, hey ladies, what can I get you today? I hate that, especially when it comes from a man. And I think that's got more to do with me just being like, don't call me that, like yuck. But even women, when women come up and it's like, don't just assume my gender identity. It's like, gets me as riled up as people assuming my sexuality. Like, fuck off. <laughs> I didn't actually realize how much that annoyed me until I watched Kira's video. I also despised being dressed in super feminine clothing by my mum. Sorry, mum, I love you so much. We've had this conversation before. But as a kid and in my early teens, I hated it. And literally, as soon as I was going out, buying my own clothes and dressing myself. You bet your bottom dollar I went straight to the men's section. I wanted to shop in the men's section for the longest time but I'd always been told that that was for boys. That was like forbidden. Like why would you, that they're boys clothes. Why would you want to wear that? And I'm not even saying like that wasn't necessarily my parents saying that. In fact they probably didn't really say that. That was just like TV, shows, the fact that something says men or women up above the certain section in the store. Other people's parents, other friends, you know, like, oh, can't wear that. That's a guy's tee, can't wear that. School uniforms, it's all very gendered. It's literally fed to us. God, those tight bodycon dresses that were all the rage when I was like in my teens, 16 to 18. I wore a bright pink bodycon dress for my 18th. Hated it, it was fugly too and no one told me, but I only wore it because I thought that's what looked good and I thought that's what suited my body. And, and some people might've thought that looked good on me, but I just hated every minute of it. I hated how feminine it made me look and the fact that I was only doing it because everyone else was doing it. Like I didn't like it. I didn't think it looked good on me. In fact, I hated the, how feminine it made me look and my features that it enhanced but everyone else was doing it and I didn't see like I would have literally worn cargo pants and a shirt if I could have but I didn't want to get judged I didn't want to look manly which is a whole other thing yuck and I hate that I thought that way but I did I hated wearing school dresses too although they weren't as bad because like everyone had to wear it and it wasn't really a choice I hated the skirts and I definitely tried to get away with wearing my PE uniform to school as much as I could on any occasion that I could I would or I'd accidentally forget my dress or forget my skirt and I didn't go to a private school so it wasn't really a big deal but yeah and I still don't like wearing dresses I you'll probably catch me wearing a dress once or twice a year and when I do it I will really want to do it and I'll feel like dressing up and being all femme it won't happen often but it does but I'm doing it for me and not the male gaze or society which is what I feel like I used to do it for as well I'll wear it because it looks cool like all the clothes I wear I do it for me and I do it because I want to feel fly I don't want to do it for anyone else except for the girls and the gays of course but no like seriously I don't do it for anyone but me because I'm like if I look good in myself and I like how this looks on me that's all I care about I don't care if everyone on Instagram likes it or not if I feel cool in this fit I feel cool in this fit something I'm also identifying with and this is something that you might think of if you're thinking you're non-binary is that I love wearing more mask clothes around my guy friends and wearing it better than they could <laughs> 
No, but it's like pulling off males clothes better and like getting those compliments from women. The amount of times I've had compliments from women saying like the amount of times I've gone to a festival and seen like multiple other guys in the same top I'm wearing because we shop in all the same places, obviously. And girls being like, you rock that better or you look that better in that. Oh my God. Oh my God. I get such a ooh, high off of that. And I never attributed that to anything. In fact, I attributed that to my dominant bisexual personality. <laughs> Maybe I'm non-binary. As I said, this is a very important theme and reminder to know. Your appearance or your style or the way you present yourself definitely is not always directly correlated with your gender or gender identity. It can be, and these things can definitely come into play and hold some sort of weight, but it doesn't always directly mean that. And I want you to know that while watching this video. I think for some things it does for me, for you it may not at all. I also want you to know you can still dress up, wear feminine clothing if you're a um, assigned female at birth, wear masculine clothing if you're assigned male at birth, still look really cute, still wear lots of makeup, still be super femme or super mask or whatever it is and still be non-binary. These things do not hold any weight. It is just those things are all simply a form of expression and the gender spectrum is, is just that. It is a spectrum. Some people use those things as a form of expressing who they are, expressing their gender identity, sexuality, but at the end of the day those things do not mean that much if if you don't want them to or if you don't express those things or if you express things opposite to how you feel, if that makes sense. Gender is a social construct. It doesn't matter how you dress, how you look, it's how you feel inside. And some people use those things to express that outwardly and some people don't. And the way someone expresses themselves outwardly does not always correlate directly with how they feel inside. I hope that makes sense. Something that Kira also explains and what you might not know is that pronouns can split up. And I also didn't know this. So I was the same as Kira. I thought if you were non-binary, you were they, them. I didn't know you could be she, they. Or he they you know so I guess another thing you can do if you are thinking you're non-binary is trying out pronouns so maybe a, a super close friend of yours or you're, if you're close with your family and someone that you know will respect what you're going through and expect sorry respect these changes and try out some pronouns with you Get your bestie to try them out and see how you feel and if they feel wrong try them out for like a week or so and if they feel wrong then you may not be non-binary but if they feel right or if they feel like interesting and you feel good about it. For example, I like being referred to as they. I feel great when I'm referred to as they. And I don't mind she. I don't mind she. I'm quite comfortable with that. But I love being referred to as they. I love hearing that. And I'm only sort of just realizing that. I also feel really comfortable just with the term they. I, I really do. Wow. So yes, as I said, this is really hard for me to sort of provide a lot of advice because I don't currently identify as non-binary, but there are definitely things that I've identified within myself today during the research and when I was watching Kira's video the other day, and it's definitely on my mind right now. And I wanted to come straight to y'all and share it because I feel like you're the best people to tell. I can't wait to chat about it all in the comments and I want to be as transparent on here as possible. And I had a chat with my housemates the other night about the possibility of me being non-binary and, and they were so great with it. And obviously they are, they're literally the best. But yeah, it's just something I'm thinking about at the moment and I may very well not be, but it's definitely been on my mind and it's really hard to figure out the difference between just wanting to challenge those gender norms and norms with women and how I meant to look and act and feel and dress and actually being non-binary, I think that's gonna be a really hard one to figure out. Almost as hard as knowing whether you want to be them or date them, am I right? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to try and answer as many non-binary based questions as I can from you on Instagram. I've got a couple here. Obviously I won't be able to answer all of them, especially if they're from like a personal perspective, but I'll try my best. What are your pronouns? So currently my pronouns are she, her, um, but I'm honestly wanting to kind of try she, they. I think I do. That sounds so crazy coming out of my mouth, but I think I do. This person said, yeah, same to be honest, because I said um, I'm questioning my, low key questioning my gender. So yeah, same to be honest. Like, how is that something you know? I'm not comfortable as a guy, but like being a woman sounds cool at times. Or maybe I just want to be a more feminine guy, but I'm not even always a more feminine guy. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that, I feel that. Um, I think it's really hard to figure out and that I can't really answer 
answer because I'm not there. But I think watching Kira's video will probably help. There are also so many videos on being non-binary and gender fluidity on YouTube that YouTube is your best source of information. Do you think someone can be gender fluid and not use they them pronouns? Absolutely. I think you definitely can. I don't think you have to use anything. Can you be gender fluid without wanting to be a man, like non-binary and a girl? Yes, you can absolutely be non-binary and a girl. There's there's no rule book, like you don't have to want to be, like being transgender and being non-binary are two different things. What does gender dysphoria feel like and how do I know if I have it? That is a really good question and I've just googled sort of the definition, so I'm going to read it out for you. Gender dysphoria is the feeling of discomfort or distress that might occur in people whose gender identity differs from their sex assigned at birth or sex related physical characteristics. Transgender and gender non-conforming people might experience gender dysphoria at some point in their lives. So it's just not feeling comfortable with the things you were born with, I guess. Physical attributes, so feeling dysphoric about your boobs or your private parts or how those things make you look or feel or needing to use a particular bathroom and that sort of thing. I think all of that comes into gender dysphoria. What if I'm not non-binary but don't fully identify with my current gender? I am no expert and please correct me if I'm wrong but is this where you would identify as gender fluid? I think. Do you have to use they them pronouns to be non-binary? No. So I thought so but a while ago um, but as I as I mentioned previously no you don't. You can be like they can split up. You don't have to be they them you can be she, they, he, they, many different forms of the um, pronouns. There's also some other pronouns like Z, Zay, I think, something like that. I don't want to get that wrong, so don't quote me on it, but I will pop it in the comments below. Do non-binary people have to dress femme slash mask because it's out of the gender binary? No. So, as I said throughout this video, the way you express yourself, choose to dress, look, feel, act, you don't know. No, you can dress however you want and still be non-binary. I'd love some information on being a femme presenting NB person. I might be one, not sure. Yes, yeah, so this is probably hard for me to answer, but the way you dress, as I said before, I suppose it's pretty much the theme of this video. The way you dress doesn't have to equate to your gender identity. You don't have to dress, you don't have to dress androgynously if you're non-binary. You can dress however you want to dress. What does it mean if I want to change my name to something more unisex? I feel so confused. It might mean that you're non-binary, it might mean that you're gender fluid, and it might just mean that you want something more uh, gender neutral. And I love that for you. I, that's great. How do I know the difference between my gender and just how I present myself? I honestly cannot answer that for you. I am literally asking myself that same question every day. <sighs> We're in this together. Sometimes I feel dysphoria in my body, but the thought of being in a male body makes me feel gross too. Is this normal? I don't think that's unusual to feel. I think you can feel gender dysphoria without wanting to be another gender if that makes sense I think like I don't want to discredit or discount gender dysphoria for what it is but I know people that aren't transgender can still experience gender dysphoria so it kind of sounds to me like you are non-binary you don't want to be a male but you perhaps want to look or feel a certain way sometimes with like me like the, the way I want my body to look in certain outfits but I don't actually want to be a male tips on coming out as agender my parents are pretty accepting but I'm scared they want won't understand and dismiss the subject. Education. I think the most important thing to do here is educate them on what a gender is before coming out as it. Lead up to it slowly um, or just yeah do like have a night where you tell them that you feel as though you're a gender and then explain to them what that is. Um, I think education is the best thing and especially when it comes from another source so someone else talking about it or someone else that it identifies as a gender um, so that you don't have to do all the talking and they can hear it from someone else that can often be helpful as well. Um, but yeah let, let us know how you go. Well besties that is all I have time for in today's video. Please someone count how many times I played with my hair and comment below. Oh, I apologize. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm literally going to go and have a gender identity crisis now. <laughs> Oh lord, I really appreciate all of you watching this. If you're still here, I love you so much. Um, please give me any advice if, you, if you've struggled with your identity or you're non-binary um, and use the pronouns she, they, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you're just non-binary or gender fluid, I'd love to hear from you as well. Um, any advice would be greatly appreciated. And yeah, if you have any other info, anything else you'd like to say or anything to correct me on, please do so. Um, because yes, as I said, I'm not non-binary and I still have a lot to learn. So... 
yeah i'm just gonna go introspect my own thoughts and feelings and i will see you all in my next one bye